day when you serve Jesus, no matter what's going on, you know he's got your best and he's working things out on your behalf. Well, welcome to our Wednesday night service at Glad Tidings and a special welcome to our family online. We think about you, we pray for you, and even though you're not in the pews, you're in our hearts. I have got some exciting news for the men. Woo! Ooh, however they do that. Ooh, uh, uh, whatever. Uh. Never mind. <laughs> As the ushers are post passing out the clipboards, this is for the men's breakfast. June 10th at 9 a.m. with Pastor Pabosco. And Pastor Pabosco is going to teach entrepreneur and all kinds of great uh, secrets about business and being successful in business. And you know what? He is just an amazing preacher. I have always enjoyed everything that he has shared, and he is going to really just be a great inspiration for all you men. So save that date, sign up on the clipboards, and be expecting God to do something amazing. Speaking of amazing, let's just praise our amazing God. Let's raise our hands. We love you, Jesus. We love you so much. We praise your name. You're an amazing God. We're so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. I've got river
showers of mercy and grace.
Go ahead and push in. Just push in. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, glory. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. say that it appears that everything is against you but I will speak in your storm and say all you need is me and I am for you you would say I'm not going forward I'm sinking and the Lord your God would remind you this night I am the Lord over the wind and the sea hear the word of the Lord for the wind is changing directions and you'll not fight against it but I will cause it to get behind you and you will go to where I called you to go and you will be solid and healthy and alive you shall not die says the Lord you shall not be destroyed says your God for I am the Lord over the sea and over the wind and I take command over your life in the name of Jesus hallelujah pretty strong word for the young lady from Ukraine who plays the piano. I'd come quickly, come quickly. Yes, she played the piano. Hallelujah. I don't need an interpretation. Get it later. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is going to be a supernatural shift in your life. Give me a usher quickly. Face me right here. Things are going to radically change. And you have prepared yourself to be a psalmist to the Lord. Your delight has been to honor Him. And you've had your skill honor Him. But the Lord would say there is a shift that's going to take place. There you've come to this place to dip into the prophetic waters and the wells of the highest anointing of the prophetic. And you shall play and people will cry and weep and repent. There will be a different sound. You've enjoyed it. You've given it to God. But hear the word of the Lord. And tell your sister this. It's going to change. God will be pleased with the sound coming from you. Hear the word of the Lord today. I will make you a prophetess on the keyboard. I will make you a prophetess. You will be interrupted. And I will have a thus says the Lord in the Holy Ghost when you sing a song. Hear the word of the Lord today. Let the glory of God touch her. Right now we pray, hallelujah. A fresh anointing. A fresh anointing. Not the songs you've sung before. Not the notes you've played before. But sounds and songs you've never heard before. The Lord will put it in your spirit. Hear it tonight. It's a new day. And there shall not be the smell of smoke on you. Your hair shall not be singed. You will not be a victim, and you will not be damaged. For I, the Lord your God, has surrounded you with my angels, my peace, and my presence. And you shall be a sound that will bring those who want to die back to life. Hear the word of the Lord this day. Says the Lord your God, I am going to touch you with a fresh anointing. Lift your hands all through this place. I pray for a fresh anointing on businesses and on homes and on lives and on your thoughts and on your words. I declare a brand new anointing to be poured out on this house. Hallelujah. Not what you've done, but what you're going to do be on this house. 
Say it with me, fresh anointing. Brand new hallelujahs. The glory of the Lord shall be in this place as never before. There shall be a prophetic mantle. And the Lord would declare people will be delivered when they walk through the door. People will hear from heaven when they walk through the door. People will cry with tears of joy they've never had before when they walk through the door. And they're coming from the north and the south and the east and the west. The enemy must let them go. And they will come and hear heaven's voice. They will hear the voice of the Lord God Almighty, not the voice of religion, not the heavy weight of rules, but freedom will reign. And they shall say, they shall say with all of their might, I sing a new song to the Lord. I sing a song of victory to the Lord. Come on, everybody. Begin to just sing a brand new song. I sing a song to my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let there be a new sound in this house. Not the sound of the opinion of man, but let there be the sound of the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. I declare that healing will be commonplace. Hallelujah. Deliverance will be commonplace. Hallelujah. When they step through the door, they'll hear from heaven. When they step through the door, the weight and the burdens will be lifted. Hallelujah. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Hallelujah. Hear it. Hallelujah. 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 I say over your life, it's a new day. Hallelujah. And God's going to do a new thing. God's going to do what eyes haven't seen, what ears haven't heard. For you will say, look at the greatness of our God. You will say, how great is our God. You will declare, how great is my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear it in your spirit. How great is my God. Lift your voices, hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. 
Hallelujah. Let there be the sound of heaven in your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. situations in the past and God resolved them. God helped you and God intervened. Hallelujah. When you come to the house of God, you offer him the sacrifice of praise. Not meditation, the sacrifice of praise. The fruit of our lips. When we come into the house of God, it's the temple of the Most High God. It's dedicated to the Lord. This place is holy. Religion has decimated God's house and made it something, an institution. This is the house of the God that heals, the God that delivers, the God who forgives. Solomon said a powerful statement. He said, it's in the heart of my father to build a house for the presence of God. And the presence of God is in this place. But let's keep the fire burning. And the fire burns by your sacrifice of praise. I just heard today on the news, 53% of the women in Canada are clinically depressed. 53%. Twenty-nine percent of the men are clinically depressed. Well, I know one way to beat depression. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And you can sing of your problems or you can sing of the problem solver. But you're going to have to begin. And I want to begin to hear in this house a new song of praise. It's a brand new song of praise, and I don't want to be the band leader. I don't want to be the cheerleader. I want to join with you and sing the song of the Lord. The Word of God says sing spiritual song. It says this, understand what the will of the Lord is. The will of the Lord is not to make a business deal at church. The will of the Lord isn't for you women to come here and pray you find a man. The will of the Lord is, understand what the will of the Lord is. Sing a new song. It's the will of God. Now, I don't know how many of you have been in the will of God this week, but just for a moment, we're all going to be in it. Hallelujah. Quit worrying about what people think. I talk to them. They don't. There is a level of dumbness that I've never, never heard in my life. It's just, you've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding. Got my hair cut today, and I witnessed to a girl that just moved here nine months ago from the Ukraine. She has not what happened to her there. How she's behaved here has paralyzed her. And she says, is God talking to you about me? I said, yes, he is. My haircut is $47, and he told me to give you 100 How many know that better be God? He said, she said, what? God told me to give you double what the haircut cost. And she just kind of looked at me. Does God talk like that? 
He's telling you He loves you. He's telling you He's not done with you. And then I said, preachers collect money. And she knew what I was talking about. She came from a godly home, and she's behaved here ungodly. And she's condemned. The presence of God will lift the condemnation. It'll lift the shame. How many in the last 10 years have done some things that you would not want broadcast on the national program? How many of some of the things that you've done really should be on the national program with a mugshot front and side? Hallelujah. I want you to thank God for his blood, for his forgiveness, for his mercy, that he's speaking to you. He's drawing you. Hallelujah. Just begin to lift your voices. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, how good. All of us together. A great is our God. Sing it with me. How great is our God. How great you are. Oh, we see how great. How great is our God. again I said praise the Lord somebody hallelujah praise the Lord we praise you hallelujah we love you we adore you we praise you on purpose with our will hallelujah hallelujah Prayerfully and carefully, I am going to bring some people here to minister. I will bring you the best. Pastor Richard Probosco is 77 years old. He is one of the greatest psalmist worshipers, prophetic man I've ever known in my life. And God has extended his strength, and he's going to come to glad tidings. Someone praise the Lord. Come on, someone praise the Lord. Then we're going to have Pastor Calvin, an attorney, great man, a great thinker, and a prophetic man. And he said, I've got a word for individuals. You know, I'm going to come and lay hands on people. And that will be the Wednesday night in about three weeks. So someone say praise the Lord. And then I'm bringing a home run hitter. Are you ready? I went to this person, I said, do you have one more real good sermon in you? I said, because if you don't, I don't want you. I mean, a real word. And on the 18th of June, Pastor Kate Gordon is going to come and bring the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. She's going to bring it. Hallelujah. She's driving up in a blood bank truck. Hallelujah. She's going to bring the word of the Lord. Is that good to everybody? What a miracle. She's a few weeks from being 90 years old. Hallelujah. This is exciting. Glory to God. By the way, if you're 70, you're still a kid. Hallelujah. In faith tonight, in faith tonight, I want you to give to the Lord. The usher's going to give you an envelope. You may be seated online. E transfer or 3456 Fraser Street, Vancouver, British Columbia. This is phenomenal soil, and everybody needs to tithe. 
Everybody needs to tithe. I'll say it again. Everybody needs to tithe. But I have to give you a life scripture. And some of you have a little bit of mysticism in your thinking about money. You're a little bit mystic about money. I don't want to break what your parents told you, but money doesn't grow on trees. It's exchanged. And people have money. And they give you money in regards to the service you give them. Don't go to work for a month and see how long you're paid. There's a service rendered. And you will live under the scrutiny and the will of limitations. Listen closely. If you don't believe that God speaks to people in power on your behalf. Hello? I had a guy come to the church when I pastored in Seattle, and he said, I don't even believe in God. But something told me to give this church 800000 How many want to hear what I said? You've heard from God. I've had people give hundreds and thousands of dollars under the scripture because I believe it. I believe it with all my heart. And some of you have God ideas that will never germinate and never happen without money. And if you don't like to talk about money, then go ahead and be poor. For those who want to hear the truth about money, say, go ahead. Let me just tell you, look what God does in Proverbs 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns it whatever way he wishes. When I was working in the secular world, I always got favor. Just supernatural favor. I started the church 40 years ago, pastored one church before coming here for 40 years. We had a great tither in the church. It was me. And I couldn't work certain times because we had the house of the Lord. He came to me, and here's what he said. Vince, you can work any hours you choose. Huh? Huh? You write your hours you want to work, and that's what you get. Listen. Listen. The heart of the king is in the hand of God, and he will turn it your direction. I'm up in Alaska, and I was a fisherman. Fish went into my net when they didn't go to other people's nets. And fish were money, honey. Because God will speak to people in power on your behalf. He takes those people and he puts them in his hand and he turns them your direction and if you don't believe this no problem at all you're not bad you're not sinning you just go ahead and work your rear off your whole life and have just enough to make it is there somebody here would like God to talk to a king we'll try it again had a building, it was worth about $1.5 million. God spoke to the board of this church. They were a liberal church, and there was nobody going to it. And there's an old guy named Smitty. Smitty was a very good drinker, but he was a board member. He toned down his swearing when he was in church. Aren't you proud of that? As Smitty went to the meeting, we were trying to get this building, but we didn't have enough money to get it. And he said, you're all going to die in rest homes. You're a bunch of old geezers. All you do is fight. And I don't pray real good, but I'm praying you all die. And we're going to take a vote. And this $1.2 million building, we're going to give it to him for $180,000, and we're going to charge him no interest 
and they get six years to pay it. You all know I carry a gun. This is what he said. He didn't say anything else. Man, I need a trustee like that. Come on, everybody, help me. I need a trustee. I just, I, I need Rebecca Sanchez coming. You know I carry a gun. I need a trustee like that. I've never had a trustee like that. A wife like that, but I've never had a trustee like that. God, listen, will speak to people in power on your behalf. We'll try it again. God will speak to people in power. He can just change the course of what they're going to do and come your way. I want you to stand with your tithe tonight and just say with me, Lord, I'm over here. Come on, somebody. Come on, I'm over here. Just wave it right now. I, I, I'm right here. You don't have to look very far. I, I, I'm right here, Lord. Hallelujah. I pray tonight. Say, pray it, pet preacher. Come on, say it. I pray God will speak to people in power. It'll go your way. Deals will go your way. Opportunities will go your way. Hallelujah. I believe it with all my heart. In Jesus' name, let's give to the Lord tonight. Just keep playing for a second. I, I love the sound. I love the sound. My wife's going to steal your hat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love the sound. Hallelujah. Love the sound. The sounds of the praises of the Most High God. Stand with me tonight in the house of the Lord. Boy, it's so easy to say with our mouth, we believe God for something. Oh, I believe God for this. But any opposition comes, you fall apart. And you can mumble and grumble and even curse the God that you say you love. I've had to stand for things. It didn't make any sense, but I had to stand. I had to stand and say, to the Lord, I will die over this cause, your house. I stand. I was a young man, and there was about seven of us young preachers. All of them could preach better than me. And I said the craziest thing to him. We were out at a really fancy restaurant called Denny's. How many know in your 20s you can eat in Denny's? How many know if you continue to eat there, you won't make it to your 50s? And I just blurted this out. If you guys all backslide, divorce your wife, don't serve God anymore, I'm going to forever. I'm going to serve God no matter what. So whatever you guys decide to do, and I know you're in a big church, and I know this, I know you can preach good, I know you have a blue suit and a red tie. Oh, you're ready to go. And I just said, I don't care what you do, I am going to stand for Jesus no matter what. And they all backslid. All of them. All of them crashed, burnt, quit, got wounded, got hurt, got divorced, changed their identity. Somebody yell at me. I said it in a very political way right there. And I had to stand. I had the same disappointments they had. I had the same rejection they had. I had the same hurt they had. I got put in Cedro Woolley, Washington for four years and two hours. The women have beards there. I saw a few of the men go, oh, I kind of like that. The dentist and the veterinarian is the same guy. It was such a world that I couldn't even, and I just said, God, I'm here. I'm here to serve the pastor. I'm here to lift your name up, and revival hit the place. Because I stood. 
How many know that you know that you know that you know and a few things in your life? Not everything, but a few things you know that you know that you know. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Not, not everything, but there's a few things in your life you know that you know that you know. Will you stand for it? Will you stand when your children are cussing your God and telling you that you're weak-minded and God promised you they'd get born again or do you cuss back? Or do you go to your lawyer and take their name out of the will? Listen to me closely. You gotta stand. If God has really told you something, I'm gonna ask you, is it worth standing for? How many wanna see it? Most Christians never see what God told them because they weren't willing to stand their feelings got hurt. Someone betrayed them. Someone lied about them. Someone, somebody help me, shout at me, somebody in this place. And they go around and they say how hurt they are and they need inner healing. I'll give you some inner healing. I'll give you some inner healing. Come to the altar and bend over. I'll give you some healing. Hey, this thing called life is hard. It's challenging. How many have some Christians you love and it's like they get demonized. And you're hurt. No, stand. I want you to tell three people to stand. I want you to tell them right now, stand. Whatever God's told you, stand for it. Hallelujah. Whatever God said in your life, stand for it. I, I, I know it's Wednesday night. Most churches have a Bible study. And I could have brought a final glass and a picture of Moses and some sheep, but instead I thought I'd just pray and preach in the Holy Ghost. I, 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 I'm not going to bring this kind of great sermon on Sunday. They don't deserve it. Yeah. But this word's going to be a real one. Because we've got a lot of pretenders and we don't have many contenders. We've got a lot of people that say the words. I should have bought a Honda. And they think it's tongues. I'm telling you, you gotta stand when you're bleeding. You gotta stand when you don't know up from down. You gotta stand when you have vertigo. You gotta stand when you're broken hearted. You gotta stand when you don't have any money. You gotta stand when everybody's against you. You gotta stand that everything you worked for and believed for, you lost it all. You gotta stand. And then you gotta stand some more. You gotta stand. My wife and I have stood for the house of God because we believe the word of God. Isaiah 2.2 2 says, in the last days, the house of the Lord will be established. It will be raised above the hills. The nations will stream to it. Out of Zion will come to the word of the Lord. And we will stand for the house of God. Hallelujah. Be seated. Thank you, worship team. Worship team, you are on call. Psalms 137, verse 1. Hear this word, Psalms 137. And verse 1. We wept when we remembered Zion. From the shores of Babylon, a place of slavery and captivity, they remembered how it was. They remembered what God had done. And now they are in Babylon, but the river went by them, and it says they remembered Zion. And some of them began to stand and say, even though we have greatly sinned, we want Zion again. We want the presence and purposes of God again. We're here because of our actions, but we stand and we say you're a merciful God. We stand and say you're the God of another chance. Somebody help me in this place. We stand and would say that your word is true regardless of how I have acted. You gotta stand. Joshua chapter 7 and verse 12. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand. And they all died in the desert. 
the called ones of God, the ones set aside, the ones that have the promises of the Lord, they went into battle and they couldn't stand. Why? Because they had secrets in their heart. They had no confidence in God. They lost their confidence because they had secret resentment toward your father who loved your other siblings more. Secret resentment towards the husband that cheated on you. Secret resentments towards the business partner that stole from you and ruined your life. And it says in the word of God they couldn't stand because something happened to them that they give themselves permission not to stand. I don't care what anybody says, what anybody does, and what anybody does to me. I'm standing. How about you? I'm not going to let my offense keep me from God's purpose. I, I, I'm not going to let anybody have a say over my life. And the moment you're bitter at your parents, the moment you're bitter at a Christian, the moment you're bitter at a family member is the moment where you will be on the shores all the days of your life and you'll remember what God did, but you'll never see it again. Every one of us, we could put a couch up here and you could lay for hours and tell us all the horrible things that happened to you. And someone would yell in the congregation, that's nothing. Let me lay on the couch. And they went into battle. And they couldn't win because of the pornography. They couldn't win because they're a thief. Do you want me to preach tonight? They couldn't win because they didn't confess the wrongs in their life. And they went in the battle, and then rather than the promises of God speaking to them, the problems of life spoke to them. And they couldn't stand. I'm asking you, why can't you stand tonight? Why can't you believe God tonight? Glad tidings, why can't we believe? I'm not a chaser of sin. I'm a chaser of the grace of God. But some of the things that have happened here historically, I didn't push it under the carpet. Sometimes the staff are kind of startled. Oh, they did this. And they kind of, oh, 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 we can't talk about it. We've got to talk about it. They did this and it was wrong, and God forgives. Because I want to stand. And it says this, they couldn't stand. And there's one guy in particular, he stole things and put it in his tent. And it was in his tent, and it's fascinating what God did. He had him go tribe by tribe, family by family, and man by man. And the things we let in our heart will be the things that will cause us not be able to stand. If we confess our sins, listen, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But you can't stand with guilt and shame. And it doesn't matter what you've done tonight. And those around the world online, it doesn't matter how you behave, what secret you have. You've got to confess it is wrong and you can stand again. You can stand again. Because now you stand in the grace. Now you stand in the mercy. Some of you had horrible marriages. And girls, I'm going to talk to you straight. You know what kind of man he was. You didn't care because you were lonely. You knew. Someone yell at me. Go ahead. Always picking on the men. Yell at me. It's girl's turn. You knew he was immoral. You knew he was a liar. You knew what he did. And you didn't care because you wanted a hairy beast by you at night. And now you're miserable and guilty. And you can't stand for his salvation because of your guilt. Why don't you just say this? I rebelled. I sinned. I was wrong. Forgive me, Jesus, and I'm telling you, it's over. The enemy cannot touch you. He cannot own you. He can't. Every promise of God is activated in your life if you confess where you went wrong. You're free to dance. You're free to shout. You're free to believe. And you're free to be blessed. 
there was a battle that Eli, Elijah was up for, but others weren't. That which was keeping them out of the promises of God, it was so powerful, only Elijah could believe God. And Elijah called for people to face their fears. Look with me to 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 1. It came to pass, after many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. It was the greatest drought known to that segment of the world of all time. And everything is on the verge of death. And Ahab had all the authority and all the power. And he was married to your ex-wife. Somebody have fun with me. Jezebel. A manipulator, a liar, a controller. And it's interesting, Ahab was related to the priest. Isn't it interesting how religion becomes our greatest enemy? Yeah, a little religion. I'd rather have them be all out drunk and a fool than just have a little religion. And God said it's time to have a showdown. So he began to solicit others, and they're going, oh, 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 He has all power. He has all authority. Listen closely. You're going to die in the drought, or you're going to face your giant. I'll say it again. You're going to die in the drought. You cannot go on with the circumstances you're under. And you're going to have to have faith in God right now. You're going to have to say to God Almighty, I'm going to Ahab. And you have to remind yourself, he has some power, but God, you have all the power. And you're going to have to say something outlandish to him under the unction of the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to tell him, it's going to rain. He's going to look at you. You must be one of those from Glad Tidings. Go present yourself to Ahab. And I'm going to send rain on the earth. Listen to me. God's going to back you up. I want you to say it out loud. God's backing me up. Say it out loud. God's backing me up. And Elijah went. What did it say in the verse before go? What did he do? He went. It says this in the word of God. He, he went to present himself to Ahab. And there was a severe famine in Samaria. while Jezebel was massacring prophets of the Lord. Obadiah, someone say Obadiah, had taken 100 prophets and hid them. You got to understand this typology right now. If God tells you something, you got to take that prophetic word and hide it in your heart. Somebody Somebody clap, somebody clap. Come on, somebody get this thing right now. When God says, you gotta hide it. You gotta hold it in your heart. God has whispered things to me in the past, and I held it in my heart. I have things about this house that are just unfolding right now that were in my heart during an impossible time. But I held it in my heart. He hid the prophets. Now as Obadiah was on his way, suddenly Elijah met him. 
he recognized him and fell on his face and said this. This is a crazy statement. It says he recognized him and fell on his face and said, is it you? Just hear this. He knew it was the prophet of God, but the prophet of God is going to call him to bring his faith and stand on it. How many of you have had pretend faith at times? Come on, lift your hands right now. God's meeting all my needs, and you have a good job. The Lord is my healer. You had a cold five days later. Come on, somebody help me now. Let's get real. Now his faith is going to have to be real. And he's going to have to not just have some prophets and have some words. How many don't want to have a hundred prophetic words in your heart and you never see any of them? I never want to prophecy again unless it's going to be manifested in my life. This thing gets heavier. We should have had a Bible study tonight. Then Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand. Look what it says. Verse 15. As the Lord of hosts lives, in whom I stand. I'm going to catch this word. How many would like more faith? How many would like to not just buckle under everything and fall apart under everything. Let's get real right now. How do you get standing faith? You stand in the presence of God. And God will make you and him and you bigger than your battle. Your worship will strengthen your legs, strengthen your heart, strengthen your emotions. And then you wash yourself in the word of God. You read the word. And everything that God says to do, do it. And then Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I serve, I will surely present myself to him today. Do this with me. Gulp. Gulp. I'm in seventh grade. My voice hasn't changed yet. I'm in a class for all, all the boys. It's a choir class. And there was a ninth grader who just loved tormenting the seventh graders. I had one hair on my face, but it wasn't real. It came out of a wart. My voice hadn't changed. I was still a boy. And he would... Slap me in the head because he stood behind me. Knock my legs out for me because we had to stand a long time in the choir. And I, Ugh! no, Vince, that's not the note. Let's hit it again. And I'd go in there and tremble over this guy. Just tremble. He was a good foot and a half. Hair on his forearms. On his feet. The bottom and the top. Strong, athletic, and I was just a little kid trying to find my way. And every day I went there and I had what we'd call preliminary ulcers. Afraid and nervous. And we're walking out and he spit on me. He just spit on me, on the back of my head. And I don't know what happened. I just want to warn everybody, you can say anything you want to me, but don't spit on me. And I turned around, and I caught him right in the jaw. Somebody say, yes, Lord. That's the time when the organ goes, yeah. Right there, the pastor just turned around, and I'm preaching about it. 50 years later, and I'm proud of it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. I smacked him in the jaw. And it's, oh yes. And it snapped his head. His head went snap. 
and he fell down. And then I jumped on him. And I said, this was for Monday. Huh? This was for Tuesday. The, this is for Wednesday. This for Thursday. This is Friday. And this is for Saturday and Sunday when I'm worried about coming back to you on Monday. And then I hit him for January. And I hit him for February. And I hit him for March. And I hit him for the year 2025. And the teacher came running. Vince, wah You're killing him. I know it. And the teacher let me hit him longer than he should have. Because he not only tormented me, but he tormented everybody else. And his favorite nephew was in the class the year before, and he tormented him. And so I think what he said to me, hit him once more. I need somebody to hit something. Come on, somebody. And say, I am not going to let this rule me. This is not going to rule my life. The word of God is, the promises of God. I've got the 100 prophets in my heart, and I believe what I believe, and I'm going to live it out. And then it goes down to verse 21, 1 Kings 18. How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. Why don't someone just say with me, I'm a Baalite. I'm a Baalite. A lot of us act like Baalites. We say we believe. But your faith, you're going to have to stand for it. Wonderful girl for my friend. He was, he was, he was semi-impossible. And this girl just adored him. I think she had real eyesight issues. And she just thought he was wonderful. And everybody's getting engaged and everybody's getting married. And he just sat there. And he came to me. He said, you guys are all engaged and all getting married. What should I do? I said, you're going to lose her. Well, she adores me today. You're going to lose her. You got a great job. She's the best you can get, fool. You want me to say that again so you can understand what I just said? That's the best you can get, fool. And I said to myself, I don't know what she sees in him. And he let two years go by. She was faithful. And then a man came her way, a real man, began to treat her right, pray with her, love her. She stopped taking the guy's phone call, and it was over. He came to me, I should have married her. You should have, should have. Now you're going to have to marry one of your cousins. Blew it. I'm going to ask you fairly tonight, how many of you can't afford it to blow it too many more times? If the Lord is really God, I'm ashamed to tell you this story. Have you ever seen someone who pushes healing on people too hard? They're awkward. They're awkward. It's, it's awkward. It's, well, you got to believe, and we're going to pray again, and you just need to this and that. But they're, they're awkward. They're just, they're awkward. They're forcing it because they want everybody to think they're involved in the healing. How many of you can't heal a common cold? Let me see your hands right now. And how many of you call your wife's name too often with just a little cold? But how many of you, God has healed you? He has healed you. Let me see your hands. God has supernaturally healed you. Watch this. So we don't need fake healings. And God's reputation isn't on the line. He doesn't need us cheering him on to heal. He heals. Hear this. He does. He heals. 
And he would pray for people, but it was awkward. He was just kind of forcing it. And then you just need to say this and you need to do this. And it was like, you're tormenting them. You're going to want them. They're going to want to die with you. He left the church and he was gone for about a year and a half. And I heard he got cancer. So I've got a pastor's heart. I just called him and I said, hey, let's beat this thing. No, I'm going to die. I'm not going to make it. I only have a few days left. I just know it. I thought, what kind of baloney was that thing? You know, some people get sick and they die and they go to heaven. But there's a whole bunch that get sick and they get healed and they go to heaven later. They go to heaven later. If God is really God, you're going to have to stand. If he's truly God, you're going to have to stand. If he really told you about something, you're going to have to stand. I had a lady and her husband was just a jerk. Harsh to her. Swore at her. Told her she was dumb. She gave birth to six kids. Who's dumb? Just say nasty things. He come to church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Pastor Shot, you're so anointed. You don't have to tell me that. You don't have to tell me that. This beautiful lady was saying, I'm standing. My husband is going to be what God tended, intended him to be. I thought, what a Christian. How many of you women would put something in a soup? We'll try to get how many of you women would put something in a soup? Oh, right. You wouldn't poison him, but how many would put something in his soup? Yeah. How many would put something in soup that he'd have to go to the restroom multiple times? Let me, let's get where we're... Back to Jezebel. <laughs> and she stood. Now, I'm going to be honest. The reports that came to me, I wanted to send some deacons over to his house. Hello? Just talk to him, reason with him. He lost his job. He's got all these kids. He had a gambling problem. They came over to his house and shot his tires in his windows. Say this with me. Jesus. Say it. Jesus. And he came afraid and broken. She threw his arms around him and said, I know God's going to rescue us. I know it. And he just said, I am so sorry. Took all these little kids and apologized. Apologized to me. He wanted to apologize to the church. I said, no, we got a whole bunch more guys like you in the church. They're coming. And he was just broken and it lasted. His father-in-law, who didn't appreciate him, he loved his little girl. And he lied to the dad about how he treated her. And he wasn't happy. But he was a Christian man. And he was... He had millions. And the Spirit of God spoke to him. Because this wife stood and said this, do you love your daughter still? I adore her. She's the most godly woman I've ever known. Then you got to love what she loves. He said, what do you mean, Lord? Pay his house off? Pay everything off? Restore him completely. And those are your grandchildren. They'll see the mercy of God and they'll all serve me if you'll do this. He said, done deal. You see what God does? It would have been so easy to taint his soup. It would have been so easy to tell everybody how horrible he is. But somebody here 
is about ready to see the reign of heaven come on you because you stand. And we're going to stop wavering between opinions. I'm going to ask you this question. Worship team, come quickly. If there's an area of your life you want the Lord to be your God, you don't want your circumstances to be your God, you don't want your hurt to be your God, but you want the Lord to be your God. Whatever it is, stand to your feet right now. Stand up, whatever the situation is, and said, God, you're my God. Hallelujah. I'm going to stand. There's many of you wonderful people that need to stand. We need to stand for this house. We need to stand for what God has called us to. We need to stand for each other. We need to, I need to stand for the elders, stand for the deacons, stand for the members, stand for the people. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what they've done, how they behave. I stand. Hallelujah. God has something for us. God has the prophetic promises in your heart. But for them to come true, you're going to have to stand. And you have to say to the Lord, I love you. And you have to say from your spirit, God, you're great. God, you're great. Some of you are out of strength, out of faith. And you don't know if you can go on. But you'll be strengthened in the house of God. You'll be strengthened in the presence of God. You'll be strengthened right now. How many of you beautiful people need some strength tonight? Hallelujah. How many need some more strength tonight? Nobody's bad. The blood of Jesus cleanses. Nobody bad. But I want to just lead you right now. Those of you that just want to stand, there's something you need to stand for. I want you as we close it, to come forward, stand with me. I'm going to stand with you. And there'll be unusual faith in the house. You have something you're standing for. Just come to the altar. I'll stand with you. Pastor Jody Ann's going to come and hold my hand. We're going to stand with you, beautiful people. We're going to stand in your circumstances. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. Your circumstances aren't God, but the Lord is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We stand with you, beautiful people. We stand. We stand and we say, Hallelujah. Let God arise. Let the enemies be scattered. Jesus, there's none like you. You love us. You love us. I thank you tonight. You're betrothing love to people. You're speaking love to people. Come and say, thy will be done in my life. Use my life for your glory, God. God, my, my legs are a little weak. My faith is a little weak. But I stand in the presence of Almighty God. I stand and say, you're my God. I stand and say, you're going to do what you said you're going to do. You are who you say you are. And I stand. I stand. And I lift my hands over you beautiful people. And I declare that you shall see what God said he'll do. You will see what God promised you. Hallelujah. I speak to your emotions. I speak to your fear. I speak to your disappointments. And I say they will not rule, but God will rule in your life. There's none like you, Jesus. You're not like a man that you can lie. Hallelujah. Stand in the anointing. And I sing it from my spirit. How great, how great, how great. Yes. There is peace. Worship team, push in, push in. Come on, here we go. There is freedom. There is freedom. There's freedom, Jesus. We believe you, Jesus. We believe you, Lord. Hallelujah. We believe you, Jesus. I believe you, Lord. I believe in who you are. I believe in your intentions towards me, God. Hallelujah. They're good. Fear. 
I break it in the name of Jesus. And I declare I stand. Spirit of victory, spirit of future, spirit of life. Hallelujah. We just declare and hear it with your ears, your heart, your emotions, and your spirit. He's a good God. And his thoughts towards you are full of life, and peace, and future. And I declare what you've done to yourself, what you've allowed to happen, it shall not be what you become. And tonight we stand in the presence of the Most High God. We say with confidence, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. We declare, it shall come to pass in everyone's life. And now lift your hands with me. We plead the blood of Jesus, all of us together. We plead the precious blood of Jesus. We're cleansed because of the blood of Jesus. We have confidence because of the blood of Jesus. We're the property of God Almighty because of the blood of Jesus. And you see the blood and the judgment shall bypass us and the favor of God shall be upon us in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I'd like you to give the Lord a hand clap of faith. Come on. No, no, no. That's not faith. I want you to give the Lord a hand clap, a shout of faith. Hallelujah. Faith in the house. Faith in the house. Faith in the house. Stand in the presence of the living God and see what He will do in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, we could be here till tomorrow, but we won't. It is good to be in God's house in God's presence. I said it is good. I'll just say it like in the South. Y'all, this is real good. This is real good. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Hey, on Sunday, the choir is going to minister. It'll be good. Hallelujah. We're going to dance. I said we're going to dance. We're going to stomp, 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 stomp on the devil's head on Sunday. And God gave me a word for the house on Sunday. Listen to it. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Just lift them up. Hallelujah. Beautiful night tonight. We love you. It was interesting. I, I haven't heard Pastor Iverson preach. And yesterday, I just said, I'm going to take a moment. He's been with the Lord for about seven years. And he said something that reminded me of why I'm here. I love this house. I love Glad Tidings. And I love this beautiful city. And I just went, wow. Jody Ann and I love this house. We love it. We love it. Thank you for allowing us to come over the border. We love the house, this house, not a house, this house. And we love this city. Great city. Hallelujah. Well, the word says planted in the house of the Lord, you'll flourish in the courts of our God. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday.